Now, we'll say a few things about the standing balances. So standing balances have always been a challenge for me. Uh, people with more flexibility often lack balance. My main issue is that my feet are quite flexible, so I collapse down in the arches of the feet. So I have to keep reminding myself to press all three points of the feet down. The center of the heel, the big toe mount of the foot, and the pinky toe mount of the foot onto the ground, and then to lift the inner kneecap forward so that I keep having that lift and I stay standing rather than allowing the knee to rotate inwards and then I lose my balance with her because I collapse in the arch. So this is a main thing to have in mind in standing balances. Today we will see um, the standing bow and the head to knee pose. So let's come to the mat. The most important thing, apart from the leg that has to be stable and steady because that's our base, is the core, the deep core. You make your life much easier by having that engagement that we've been talking about in the previous videos. So roots in and up, navel in and up, ribs closed, shoulder blades back and down, and then you're really compact. Now with the standing bow, there will be a back bend in there. With the back bend, again, keep all of these engagements so that you keep your lower back safe and you concentrate on coiling the upper back and you're opening up the chest, flashing the heart rather than collapsing in the lower back and arching here. So if you look at the spine, and now I'm gonna turn around as if you see my spine. Um, there's the lumbar part of the spine, which is the lower back, and there the spine is already back bending. It's, there's already that curve. The upper spine, the upper back, the thoracic spine, has this curve that's already in a forward fold. So that's what we want to neutralize. We have that curve in the forward fold, and we want to straighten it. We want to have that part of the spine lengthened. So they keep sending sit bones into the ground, navel in and up, then you can lengthen the upper part of the spine while leaving the bottom part of the spine neutral or even lengthening too, as if you're kind of uh, forward bending at the bottom. My teacher said we should always find our forward fold in every back bend and our back bend in every forward fold. Let's try it. Standing bow. Inhale, left arm up and grab the inner right foot with the right hand. Inhale, the left arm up and exhale, right knee down. Lengthen the spine. One more time, inhale, left arm up, and then exhale and slide the knees, and kick back and up with the right foot, so pulling forward with the left hand, four, five. Keep sending left seat spoon into the ground, and bring the left knee, inner kneecap forward, four, four. Kick back and up to squeeze the right back cheek, Four, three. Charge yourself down and pull forward through the left hand. Four, two. Navel in and up, chest up, coil through the upper back. Four, one. And kick to come up. Let's try the other side. Press right foot down. Already send right sit bone into the ground, press right heel into the ground, and keep sending the right inner kneecap forward while drawing the right thigh back. There's always those balances. 
Inhale, right arm up and grab instep of the left foot. Shoulder blades back and down first. And then inhale, right arm up, reach, reach up. Exhale, left knee down. Inhale, up and forward while kicking the left knee back and up. Four, five. Draw shoulder blades back and call the upper back. Four, four. Keep pressing the foot and draw the right inner kneecap forward. <laughs> four, four. Navel in and forward, chest up, four, three, kick back and up, squeeze the left back cheek and pull forward to the right fingers, four, two, focus, four, one. kick to come up, okay, stay still, we've been flashing the heart so don't move around, to knee pose. With head to knee, you should keep zipping everything in and up. The legs, again, should be straight. Something to be said about the legs. If you have hypermobility, like I do, then you do not lock the legs. Because if you see, if I lock the legs, my knee goes further back and that's not safe. So I should always be sending left sit bone down or right sit bone down. And I should keep having that engagement of left of the inner thighs back and the inner knees forward. If you do not have any hypermobility issues and you lock your knee and your leg is straight, then that's very good, good for you. You can keep your balance much better than I can. So if you have no issues, then you lock your knees. If you lock your knees and your knees go behind your hips, then be careful. And I would advise you not to do it. Then with starting head to knee, everything in front of the body is compact. You're having this flexion of the front of the spine. So it's important to bring navel in and up, close the ribs and squeeze the chest. In order to do that, you keep bringing the shoulder blades down and you're widening the shoulder blades. So before with the back bend, we were bringing the shoulder blades back and down and together to pop the chest forward. And now we're doing it opposite. Let's try it. And let's see where it goes. The other thing is that when you bring your knee up or forward, you should keep sending your hips forward so that you're on the ball of the foot. And it's what we were saying with our forward folds. You want to stretch the back of the leg, so you should keep coming forward, almost feeling like you're going to fall forward, rather than bring the hips back. So standing head to knee pose. Press left heel down, left big toe man of the foot down, left pinky toe man of the foot down, send left sits bone into the left heel, and internally rotate the left thigh while sending the left inner kneecap forward. Inhale the right knee up and clasp your fingers under the foot. Bring the knee forward five centimeters and from here either stay or exhale and extend the leg. Four or five. Flex the foot and keep sending the leg forward. You may bend the elbows and grab the shin, four, four. Then shoulder blades back and down, flex the front of the spine and maybe bring the forehead to the shin, four, three. 
You're sending left six going down, left inner knee forward. Four, two. You keep sending right foot forward, flex the foot, short leg down, forward. Come back one step at a time. Let's do the other side. Send right six bone down, <laughs> internally rotate the right thigh, and externally rotate the right shin. Short legs back and down, and already flex the front of the torso. <clears throat> Inhale the left foot up and grab the left foot from underneath. Inhale, left knee forward five centimeters, and maybe stay here, or exhale, extend the foot, four or five. Flex left foot forward, and extend left hip forward, four, four. Maybe go for the other variations, bend the elbows, bring head to shin, four, three, Keep standing right, sits going down, right inner knee forward, left heel forward, four, two, short legs down, flex foot, four, one, <laughs> come back one at a time, and that's it, standing head to knee pose. I like to say bring your head, the top of the head to the shin to find more flexion but it's head to knee pose so you want to bring the top of the head to the knee and really flex everything i'm not there yet but if you're there then keep flexing everything and keep sending shoulder blades back widening them to bring the crown of the head to the knee while doing the pose thank you for watching and have a brilliant brilliant day